Hello. Well, last week we did vector drawables, so this week we're going to animate them. Woohoo! 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 know what Where's it is the sound can you can you hear me Mike? i know can what the problem me? is so i'll do it again for a change i always do hello everyone and welcome back to code with italians today we have again with us our friend mark my audio was muted because windows as usual got very confused with sampling rates and then obs got really confused with the microphone yay <laughs> so mark <laughs> do you want to explain again what we're doing today Oh, God. Well, last week we talked vector drawables. Um, this week we are going to talk about animating them. So, um, I mean, last week it was great because we saw how vector drawables are made. Essentially, I'm not. I don't mean it in the like the uh, when mommy and daddy loves themselves very much. No, that's not what Jesus I meant. Christ. <laughs> Really? I mean, we are like two minutes in. Okay, wow. They open Illustrator and they get on with it. <laughs> hey, what? Jesus Mom Christ. and Dad are designers. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> You're building a story just to cover <laughs> your, your, I mean, your, your weirdness. I mean, you were making like a romance out of it just because you need to... Okay, I, well, at least I'll give you that. Creativity is, is, is something with you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Please, go on. Obviously, Skype has frozen the webcams, but that's okay. We can still hear okay. you at least. <laughs> Me? Yeah, both of you. Um, <laughs> there is stuff here. Adam, I was family friendly. You've been witnessing there was no bad words or anything there. I am not in a hot tub. And if being in a hot tub is fine, that is definitely fine. <laughs> so even save me from myself, please. Yes. Do, do the even it's thing. Bastiano. Is it, am I, it's still, I mean, I'm moving or you just hear my voice. I don't, I don't mind, but. So... You're not moving, but we can hear you. You're a very handsome bunch of pixels right now. Oh, shit. Okay, whatever. So uh, as long as you can hear me, I want to thank you for the support. Uh, I want to remind you that you can uh, support us for free on uh, on Twitch if you have an Amazon uh, Prime subscription. So if you have a Amazon Prime subscription, you can connect your Amazon gaming account to your Twitch account. And if you visit our um, homepage on Twitch, you will see that you can subscribe with a blue button saying uh, subscribe with Prime. And um, and that's for free for you. And for us, it's just like a couple of dollars or something that go into the, um, the, the, the pot. Oh, nice. Thank you, Mark. Um, and that's how we can uh, afford buying uh, stickers that we can ship to you as a giveaway on every episode. I cannot show the stickers because I'm frozen. Uh, no, so... you, you are unfrozen now, but your oh, microphone no, I'm, I'm is just outside of, of range. I know you put it on the microphone already, but it's yeah, just well, outside need, of I... the frame. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, need, I, mean, I need to fix this. By the way, uh, back to the sticker situation. So as every episode, we are going to um, give away our Angry Pizza stickers and uh, for free. So we are shipping them worldwide for free. Thank you to thanks to our supporters. If you win the giveaway and you are a supporter of any kind, uh, a coffee supporter or um, um, prime supporter like on Twitch, you also get the holo sticker. So now the holo sticker is pretty interesting because you can't buy it. <laughs> uh, but while you can buy um, most of our stickers on our uh, coffee store. And um, so, uh, well, also, you can buy our latest one that is actually uh, our best seller at the moment. And it's the Invalidate Caches and Restart. Um, every Android dev uh, needs this. So just head on the, on the store um, and you can, you can support us as, uh, as much as you can, as much as you wish. And this is, this is for me. 
we can Ooh. start. So, um, okay, so today it's going to be interesting because Mark is supposed to share his screen like he did last week. Uh, but as you can see, Skype is not terribly helpful. So let's see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll maybe try to close the call and restart it. Maybe it will work. I don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Uh, let's try and switch to see if we can see Mark's screen. Can you try doing something there? So uh, I certainly can. Oh, it's fine. I mean, it's not super high frame rate, but it works. Yeah, so the animations might not look as good, but yeah, it's updating. Oh. Yep, it's all red. No, wait. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, so some of you, regular viewers, might recognize the, the image on the, uh, on the right of the screen there. Um, so Seb actually sent me across the Angry Pizza uh, SVG file. Um, so first thing to look at is um, before I actually imported it into Android Studio, I opened it in Sketch, um, but you can choose whatever image drawing is your uh, package is your preference. And I changed the eyebrows to red color. Um, the reason for doing this was twofold. Uh, for, firstly, well, the reason that I'm interested in the eyebrows is that's what we're going to animate. We're, we're going to make the angry pizza even angrier. Um, and it's the eyebrows that we're going to uh, animate. And uh, I think uh, people on the Discord uh, got a sneak peek of this uh, a few days ago. Um, so. Uh, yeah, if you're a supporter and you're not on the Discord, you should get on there because uh, the, there's some uh, cool stuff on there sometimes. Um, so we're interested in the eyebrows. And if you look at this file, there's an awful lot here. To try and uh, go through this and identify which uh, path is which is time consuming. But by opening it into... Uh, uh, by opening it in uh, Sketch first before importing it into Android Studio, uh, I was able to color the eyebrows red. And when we scroll down, we can see the red color swatches uh, here, which make it really easy to work out which path is which. Um, and you can further identify these just by uh, then changing them back to black. So we know that this is the right eyebrow, which is why I've na so named this group. And this one is the left eyebrow. So the only other thing I've done to change this is once I've found these, I put them inside groups. Uh, now we spoke a fair bit about groups last week. Um, there are certain things you can animate on a path element. And there are different things that you can animate on a group element. And the kind of animations we're going to do uh, for the eyebrows, we actually need to animate some of the, the group um, attributes. So the way to think about how we're going to animate these is if you think that each of these uh, XML uh, elements is kind of like a Java class, and each of the attributes is kind of like a property on that class. Now, if you're familiar with general property animations on Android, um, we can actually use that very same technique to, as this is inflated, it is inflated into objects. And so we can actually perform property animations. And that is kind of how uh, animated vectors work. We're, we're effectively doing property animations on the objects that get inflated here. So I've put both of these paths into a separate group because we're going to animate them slightly differently. I've named the group because that becomes important for this is kind of like the object reference for that. So we can actually say which group we want to animate. 
And I've also given pivot points for both of these. Now, I actually found the pivot points by basically, um, it is actually the start points of each of these just happened to be by coincidence. But how I discovered what they were was I created a path. Uh, I gave it a fill color of red. Uh, why has that disappeared? Ah, I don't want that. <laughs> okay. And then the path data. I basically tried moving to there and then doing a line to a point very, very close to it. Which is essentially on top of the previous one. Yeah, and for some reason that's not showing. <laughs> uh okay let, let's make it even further away um okay i'm i'm an idiot um so i've given <laughs> it a fill color but this isn't a closed path i actually need to give it a line color a stroke color a stroke color yeah of red and a stroke width of one and now we're still not seeing a dot, so let's actually just make it slightly bigger. Ah, uh, oh, you nice. can see I it's very see faint. Um, so uh, let me just zoom in a little bit. So you yes. can see. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's not a very good line, but it, it's enough to show you that roughly that point is the start, the bottom uh, point of the eyebrow, um, because there is a, a, a width to, around that as well. And similarly, the um, uh, the right eyebrow has a pivot point set in the bottom corner. So that's the basic setup to the vector itself um, and what we now have is this is how we animate it so this is a scary looking file initially <laughs> but no need to worry we'll go through it it's not as uh, a, a, as uh, intimidating as it might first look this is effectively a mapping file. We're going to map named objects in the vector drawable to object animators. Uh, now, what we're using is a thing called uh, inline complex resources. Um, this is uh, basically a, um, a thing that's built into AAPT. I will just drop a link to the official docs into uh, the chat. Thank you. Uh, because I thought ahead. <laughs> um, what the, these allow us to do, they're really quite nice. Um, normally, each of these targets um, is where the mapping is performed. So this is going to run animations on the left eyebrow. Normally, we would put an animation in here, and it is actually a required attribute. And then we could define uh, another animator. Um, but what uh, these uh, complex inline resources allow us to do is we must declare the AAPT namespace. Then what we can do is we can declare this is an attribute with a name Android animation. So it's the same as putting this attribute in. And whereas we uh, link to an external resource here, we can actually embed it 
in here rather than ha have it in a lot of different files. So this is really nice for readability. However, there is a but. The support in Android Studio for this isn't great. Um, by doing this, you'll lose autocomplete when you're typing in. So here I can do add an attribute and I'm getting autocomplete for Android animation. But if I try and do the same thing in here, it's just shrug. I, <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. And it's a little annoying because this has been around for a while now. Uh, it's nothing new. And Android Studio has never actually supported this. The easy way to develop these is to use an external scratch file that's just a, an animator uh, resource. Develop your animator in there and you get all the normal autocomplete. Once you're happy with it, you copy it into here um, and it will just work. Um, so what uh, AAPT actually does is um, uh, uh, cl close the find panel. Okay. There we go. Better? Yes, thank you. <laughs> it's just we can see the, the entire preview and more code. Right. Um, so this is just shorthand for having an external resource. The, the body of this is exactly what would go in an external animator file. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason this is nice is just because it helps for readability. You don't need to jump backwards and forwards between files to understand what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So it's much more succinct if you use a link to external animators. But um, I just find this um, better for readability. But what a AAPT does here is uh, when uh, you build the app, AAPT will see this and it will basically split this out into a separate file. So it is uh, breaking things up for you. Um, and that's what's going into your APK. So you will have separate files in your APK, but it just keeps a source readable. It's worth knowing that it does that because if you use the same thing repeated, it's going to split it out separately uh, mm -hmm. each time it's used. So every time you inline something, even if there's duplication, it will split it out each time. So it can uh, bloat your APK if you're using this a lot. So that's just something to, to, to watch for. But so, because at the end of the day, what AAPT is, not, is doing is not super smart. It's just saying, oh yeah, I'll take this content, write it out to a separate file and like generate a random name for that and replace it in this attribute for this node. Done. Yeah. Precisely. Um, so this is going to perform animations on the left eyebrow. And this is the, the three animations it's going to perform. So I've just grouped three object animators in a set. So for anyone that is from already familiar with Android property animations, these are just Android property animations. And these are going to add uh, animate properties on group called left eyebrow which we already saw is this group uh, now i mistakenly have left that in which we don't need it's the the first one it finds that it will use um so uh we can zoom back out of there um so it's we're gonna animate attributes of this group so the first thing we're going to animate is translate x so translate x is just going to move something in the x direction and we have uh we're going to reverse it we're not going to repeat it we've got a 
duration of 200 millis, we're going to uh, do an accelerate decelerate uh, interpolation on it. Which, if you don't know about interpolation, watch two streams ago when Seth <laughs> talked about easing curves um, and went on a wild tangent. <laughs> <laughs> So well, the property fun. name is translate x, and we have a from value and a to value. So we're go, going to move one uh, unit within our animated vectors, and we talked all about units. These are effectively the virtual pixels will on the canvas, not DPs. Um, there is a big difference, but we, we covered all that last stream so i'm not going to go into a, a detailed discussion of that again but it's going to animate from zero to one so it's going to offset it to the left it's a float type because the canvas uh, uh, positions are floats and then we're going to reverse so when, at the end when the animations run again it will run in reverse so we get a toggle behavior so that's basically just going to move this very slightly to the left now we have a second object animator and this is where uh, animated vectors really get um, useful is when you start um, combining animations together um, most animations are really quite simple but it's only when you actually combine them, you can get some much more complex behaviors. Um, and that can make things really interesting. Um, and there's another example we'll, <clears throat> we'll cover um, on the, the, the next example um, that really shows how combining lots of very simple animations can actually create something really quite interesting. So the second thing that we're going to animate here is a scale so the scale y so this is gonna uh, because we set that pivot point uh, down at the the bottom left corner of the left eyebrow when we do a scale it's going to scale away from that point so that's the the reason we set that pivot because it's defining where certain operations are going to uh, uh, to, to, to occur from so in the case of the scale, we're going to scale from 1 to 1.15. So we're just going to grow slightly in the y direction. So the bottom edge will stay the same, but it's going to just stretch upwards a little bit. And that's going to be happening at the same time as this translate. So this point is going to move slightly to the left. The top of the eyebrow is going to stretch up. Um, that's another float type with exactly the same repeat, reverse, and interpolator. But all that's different there is it's the the scale y property we're going to change on the group and the the values there. The third object animator got exactly the same reverse, repeat, count, duration, interpolation, but we're going to perform a rotation. The rotation is going to rotate around the same pivot point that we defined already. And we're just going to do a 10 degree rotation from zero to 10 degrees. And again, that's a float type. So just to recap, we're going to get the whole thing is going to move very slightly to the left. It's going to stretch upwards and it's going to rotate 10 degrees clockwise. So those three are all happening at the same time. Then on the right eyebrow, we're doing something very similar. We're doing a translate X, but it's actually going to move slightly to the right. Then we're going to do a scale Y that's identical. It's uh, the pivot point is the bottom left corner of the eyebrow or the bottom left point of the eyebrow. And so it's going to scale the, uh, upwards from that point. And then we're doing a rotation around that same point but this time we're going 10 degrees anti-clockwise. So if I actually show the uh, where are we running devices, 
we can see this running on a Pixel phone. And when I click the, uh, the image, it's going to play the animation. And when I click again, it's going to reverse the animation. So you can just keep repeating this. Uh, and it's quite simple, but you can see how just doing a translate on its own would be fairly dull. Just doing a scale on its own would be fairly dull. Just doing the re rotate on its own would be fairly dull. But when you actually combine them, you actually get something that uh, actually gives uh, the, the, the animation a bit of character. It's just combining those techniques and you can make it feel kind of how eyebrows would move if the pizza was getting angrier, which... Um, you can quite understand a pizza getting angry if someone's, uh, um, you know, threatening it with a pineapple. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it's a very simple uh, animation, um, but it's relatively easy to do. And all you need to do is understand where these paths are. Um, you un need to understand where the correct pivot point needs to be. But then you can, uh, you know, just do fairly simple stuff and you get something that, that seems to have a little bit of character. So any questions at this point? Is everything as clear as mud? Uh, sorry, I am just having too much fun running predictions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a question. Yes. Do you think we could use property values holders instead of the set in this case? Yeah, absolutely. Um, do whatever works for you. Uh, I, I've gone for, for a set here just to, for simplicity. But uh, as always in Android, there are always multiple ways of doing the same thing. So use whatever works for you. Sometimes use what's right for the, the, the particular um, uh, subject domain um you know it's it can uh, you know uh, sometimes uh one animation will be easy using property values holders other times it's easier using a set um either way by knowing about both you it enables you to choose what, whatever's best for the, the the problem at hand um I think we mentioned last week that I've got a, a whole blog series on animated icons. Um, in some of those, I use property value holders. Other times, I use sets. So, uh, yeah, use whatever works. That's the, the, the simple answer. Uh, just because I don't like, don't remember using property values holder. Uh, is that that's not something you do in the XML, is it? It's in the code. Um, or is it? Uh, I just need to uh, remind myself. Um, <laughs> I will admit I do yeah. not remember. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, you pro yeah. So this isn't going to work as well for uh, vectors. I've definitely used these somewhere. Let me see if I can find an example of where I have used them. Um, no, I have used them in animated icons. Where have I? <laughs> Is this uh, your blog yeah. post, probably? <laughs> yeah. So there is an example here. You have an object animator inside that. You have property values holders. So, uh, uh, yeah, I can. Uh, ah, right, right. In the animated icons loading v2. Yeah, I, I've got one in uh, there. So I've just shared a link. If you go down to the uh, animating things section, you can see the property values holder in there. So you, you can basically add multiple uh, property values holders inside the object animator, and you can animate different properties in different ways. So we could have grouped them all inside of that. Yeah, that would have worked fine as well. 
So, uh, yeah, you can use that. Um, as I said, my memory was correct that I have, yes, <laughs> used both sets and property values holders. And they're just different ways of organizing things inside the object animator. Got it. Thank you. But, yeah, um, I'm a bit rusty on this, but uh, it's easier uh, to yeah, look it up. Than it's that. been quite a long time for me as well uh, since I've uh, animated the vector drawable. <laughs> Um, okay, so we have the Angry Pizza, which was goal number one, and that was actually fairly fast. So what do we want to animate next? Okay, I will just switch over um, what I'm sharing because uh, we have something else. So hopefully my screen should yep. change. Um, and... Uh, what you should now be seeing now is uh, th this is actually some slides uh, from a talk I gave um, a few years back called Wow, uh, Very Vector, Much Such Love, I think, um, which, uh, yeah, silly name, but I'm quite silly sometimes. Um, and this is kind of another um, animation um, Again, it will show various little techniques here that none of which are particularly complex. But when you combine them, you can get something, uh, you, you know, quite nice, quite pleasing. So this took me a little bit of time, um, but I, I actually was working night and day on this. And so you can kind of see um, the inspiration I got. Um, so what it's doing is it's animating the sun to a moon um, and there's a fair bit going on and initially it it really does look uh, quite complex but there's nothing particularly uh, complicated in isolation and so what we'll do is we'll step through every single part of the animation and see just how it builds up um, and there's a lot of different techniques that we'll cover in here so to start with, we've got the background. So the background is actually changing color, color from the day sky to the night sky. And we do that with an object animator. We're changing, this needs to be done on a path element. So we, the path here is a rectangle that fills the background. Um, and all we're doing is we're animating a property name of fill color which is the fill color of that path. Um, we have the value from and value to are just two RGB color values. Uh, and the type we have to give it is a color type. And that would just interpolate uh, between those two values as the animation runs over 500 millis. And that's how we get the background color changing from a light blue, which is the from value, to a darker blue, which is the two value. <laughs> Phil color. <laughs> I, I do not apologize for my terrible puns. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one end of, that's the first element. So the second thing is we have a yellow line, which will please Seb greatly because Seb likes yellow. Yes. And this is actually one of the rays coming out of the sun. Um, and we animate this in a couple of ways. The first thing we do is use a trim path. So we spoke a little bit about trim path last week. Um, but I'll, I'll just give a quick recap because it's not as though we're short on time or anything. So th this is actually just a vertical line that I've drawn. And a trim path allows us to uh, draw just a section of it. Um, and trim path on its own isn't uh, particularly useful in a static uh, vector. But in an animation, it controls that we're just drawing the first part of the line. Uh, and so we're doing trim path start. And we're animating this from zero to one. Uh, uh, apologies, I jumped ahead too quickly there. I shouldn't have clicked. 
So, um, so what this is doing is at the start of the animation, we're drawing nothing. And at the end of the, the animation, uh, sorry, uh, we're controlling the, where the, the start of the line is. So we're starting at, at the actual start of the line. That's position zero. And we're finishing at the end of the line with two position ones. So the entire path uh, runs from zero to one. If we animate the trim path, it's basically doing this draw and hide. So we're starting with the yellow line drawn. But as we animate the, the trim path, the, the trim path start, it's changing the start position to different points on that line. So we're just drawing a, a separate segment of the line in each frame of the animation. And that's how we can get this uh, sort of draw undraw uh, animation going. And trim paths are really, really powerful when it comes to this kind of stuff. This is about as simple as you can get. Um, but there, there's plenty that you can do on a much more complex path using trim paths. So if you think of spinners, which uh, where you have uh, a leading edge being caught up by a trailing edge, you know, the actual line segment uh, shrinking and expanding, you're, that's all being done with trim paths. Uh, so there is a, um, another one of the animated icon series where we do something like that. So the next thing that we do with this is actually we animate the color as well. So here we're animating the stroke color property. And we're going from uh, this yellow, which is a solid yellow, to a completely transparent gray. So B3, B3, B3 is going to be a gray. And so what it's doing is the yellow is changing to, to the gray, but we're also animating the alpha here because we're going from uh, fully uh, 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 opaque to fully transparent. So you're actually getting this fade out and it's fading to gray as well. Um, And although it's quite subtle, it's kind of necessary because we'll see this uh, uh, color change from uh, gray, uh, so from yellow to gray again. And that time it won't be doing the alpha. If we didn't do it here, it would kind of look odd because the, the two different things would uh, be kind of animating in unison that start at yellow one of them's fading out if it, if that was fading out from yellow it just wouldn't look quite right so uh that's why we've got the fade to gray here because it's matching uh another color state elsewhere which we will see shortly so the next thing we need to do is duplicate this 12 times uh, it's easy to see it's 12 because they're kind of like the uh, the ticks on a clock face. Uh, so that's basically the same thing. And all that's different on each of those is a translate and a rotate around the center point. And then they can be put into a group. Now that they're inside that group, we can animate them all together. So the first thing we do is give an animation on that group of 30 degrees. So I've taken out the, the, the fade and uh, trim path animations for now, just to keep this easier to follow. So we have this rotation on the group. Then we have a scale X and a scale Y as well is being done here. I've only included the scale X. So we're scaling the whole thing so that it grows and shrinks. So you're scaling X and Y by the same amount. Uh, exactly. So essentially, so, copy paste this and change yeah. X to Y. Yeah, just okay. change one letter to Y. Um, and so when we run that together with the color change and the alpha and everything, that's kind of how we're getting these the sun's rays shrinking and dissolving away as the animation runs. So again, just uh, combining those little techniques, we get something kind of much more interesting than any of those small, uh, silly individual 
animations, but they build together into something much more pleasing. So the next thing we need to do is think about the sun and the moon. So this is a, actually a, a bit more complex still. Anyone that watched last week's stream shouldn't be completely baffled by uh, the code on the left-hand side, but we'll go through it as we go because uh, it will help understand how the animation is working by just understanding these paths. So the first thing we have is a move to. Uh, a move is basically moving from the top left-hand corner, which is where the, the coordinate space starts from, um, and we're moving 100 uh, units in the X direction and 50 units in the Y direction, which brings us to the yellow dot. Um, we're then going to do an arc. Now, we covered arcs last week again, but I will run through this quickly. So an arc is a way of drawing uh, a segment of... Uh, a circle or an ellipse. You can draw ellipses by using asymmetric values for the two radius values. Uh, we're just interested in circles here and quick example and we'll, we'll kind of go through it to try and explain how this works. Now bizarrely we're going to jump to the final two uh, parameters for the arc command and so the A is saying it's an arc like M was saying it's moved to. And the final two uh, arguments are actually the X and Y position of the end of the arc. So the two yellow dots, the, the one kind of uh, top center, that's the start position. The one that's uh, kind of um, mid right is the um, the end position. So we're going to draw an arc between these two points. And we want an arc that's going to be 49 by 49 radius. So the radius is 49 in the X direction and 49 in the Y direction. There are two possible circles that can pass through both of these points that have that radius of 49. Um, they're the two circles we can see. There's no other circles that meet those criteria that can pass through those two points. The third argument, the zero, we can actually ignore because that only becomes relevant if we have uh, an ellipse where we have uh, different X and Y radius values, so we can ignore that. The other two param parameters, the one and the zero there, they dictate which of those specific arcs we're going to use. So one of them uh, dictates which of those circles we use, and the other one dictates whether it's the larger section or the smaller section that connects those two. Uh, so if we change the uh, what's that one to the fifth parameter, that's going to select one circle or the other. And then the other argument, the fourth argument, is going to dictate which of those, the two arcs that join those two, are going to be used. So that's how we get portion of the, the sun moon. This is the bit that doesn't change. Um, so this doesn't animate at all. This is, is fixed. And we now need to worry about that smaller section between those two points that's the bit that we need to animate between kind of a, a full circle sun and a crescent moon shape um, now the obvious thing would ju be just to use another arc here um, and that would certainly work for just drawing the the circular shape i'm drawing the 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 separate uh, two different arcs for the full circle for the sun and the crescent moon for the the moon sorry the, the the concave crescent section for the crescent moon 
The problem with that is we can't animate between the two because the values that control that are, 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 are literally just on-off switches. So you can't animate between those two states. So instead, we're going to use a cubic Bezier. And that will make Seb happy because he likes Beziers. I love Beziers. Um, In case uh, it wasn't clear at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you cannot actually draw a mathematically correct uh, section of a circle using a cubic Bezier. But you can get very close. Um, it's close enough that you won't notice the difference. But a cubic Bezier gives us a huge amount of scope when it comes to animation. And that's why we're going to use this approximate uh, version here. So because we've just finished drawing the arc, the current uh, pen position is actually the dot sort of mid to mid to right, because that's where the arc finished drawing. So that's the current position. So when we come to the uh, cubic Bezier, the first argument is the end point. So that, or sorry, the, the last argument is actually going to be where we want to draw to. This is actually the um, middle top uh, point because we actually want to, to complete this circle or this uh, curve. And then the middle two are the two control points. So the first one is the control point linked to the start position. The second one is the control point linked to the end position. And when that curve is drawn, we can get pretty close to a full circle. And just for completeness, we're doing a closed path at the end, just because I always think it's good practice. If you want more discussion on that, uh, <laughs> watch last week's stream if you didn't see it already. Um, so why does this help us when it comes to animation? Uh, the start and end points don't need to move, but we can actually animate those two control points. And if we do that, we can get this. So you can see how those two control points are moving. The code on the left shows the two values. So the uh, the top line shows the control points for the full circle. The bottom one shows the control points for the crescent moon. And all we're doing is they those control points are moving in straight lines between the the, the those two uh, control point positions. But we actually get a very very nice smooth transition on the curve that's joined them joining them because of how Bezier's work. Uh, that's why I say that uh, said earlier that the cubic Bezier's give us huge scope for nice animations because you can do uh, really cool stuff like this with actually quite simple animations just by uh, animating between these start and end paths. We get so much done for us out of the box um, and this is a pretty uh, complex animation computationally, but all we've done is some, a bit of basic maths to, to calculate the start and end points of those control points. And we get something that's uh, uh, really quite nice. Um, I, I, love, I, I have to say that I love this because this enables me <laughs> to actually try this kind of stuff because for something like this, I would probably look for a lot of animation that somebody else already <laughs> done, and you know I can find it on lotty file or whatever. Uh, but I will probably, you know, last month, let's say last month, a few weeks ago, I will I haven't even tried to to build this. I'm not sure that I can build this because there's a lot of work in this still. But now uh, I have an idea what we are talking about. You know, like there, there is a there is hope for me <laughs> that I, I understand because as you as you as you said, this thing 
you know, it's it's bending a curve, it's animating a curve, but then if, if you focus on the real stuff, those are just a couple of points that move on a straight line and and Android is doing the rest. So it it's fascinating the that when when you uh, overcome the initial oh this thing is so complex at some point it, it becomes to well at least i don't want to say look look easy but it looks doable right uh, at some level right or at least you can think with it and things like that so thank you mark for, for I, this because it's so nice can i point out that uh someone in the in the viewers in the chat just posted a link to an app that judging by the nickname they did and it looks super cool it's like it's an app that you can use to check out uh like different curves and stuff and obviously there's busier so there's a very nice explanation of how it works it's really cool i really like this and you have then you you can play with this so you can see like the, the curve is animating. Obviously it looks like shit because there's so much reflection, but this is very nice. And you can add more complexity to the curve and then you can animate it. This thing is really cool. I wish I, 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 I could show it last time. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm adding it to the episode notes. So yes. uh, thank you for, for sharing. Uh, Jesse, Jesse, and then I'm butchering your name, so yeah, be him? patient. Maybe I don't know. Uh, but yeah, but, so yeah. your your app is gonna end up in the episode notes. Thank you for sharing. And uh, Mark, where are we? What are we animating now? <laughs> okay, it's um, we're getting close. So oh, look at that. If we take the control points out, we can see this animation from the the uh, sun to the crescent moon. Um, uh, by the way, Mark, uh, people in the chat are asking, how do you actually morph the curves? Um, I can go back. So let's just, sorry, I need to. So these two commands, these are, uh, so the first one is that the curve command we, uh, we gave, uh, we created it when we drew the full circle. The second one is the shape of the crescent moon. And so you, you can see that the only things that are changing are these two control points. Uh, in a bit, we'll see how we can do a path uh, animation uh, in a vector drawable. And you basically just give a start and an end path um, and tell it that it's type path data and it will interpolate between these points to work out what the values of the control points need to be for each frame. Um, so yes, you just do a path animation and, and we'll, we'll have a look at a path animation in a bit. So the next thing we need to do is obviously the sun is yellow and the moon is gray. So we need to do a color transition transition here and you may remember earlier where we uh, did the color change on the rays of the sun they're basically these two colors only we're not altering the alpha here so as the the rays are disappearing the sun is also changing color and that's why we match the the color of the rays to that changing color of the sun even though they're failing out uh, fading out um, so that when we put the whole thing together we get something kind of uh, you know really quite interesting um, and nothing in there is particularly complicated again but it looks it uh, but just combining lots of different simple techniques you can get some quite nice results um, I'm not saying this is uh, a replay this is something that you can replace Lottie animations with. Lottie animations very much have their place. They can get much more complex than stuff that we could do easily in animated vectors. 
Um, but certainly for things like uh, icon animations, um, you know, st stateless drawables and stuff like that, um, <clears throat> vectors can really do a lot. And, and that's kind of what we'll, uh, we'll cover next, is just showing how to do a, a, a random animated icon. <clears throat> um, but I guess just as an aside, uh, just as an aside, I could give uh, a quick explanation of how the presentation slides work. Um, I think Ivan and uh, Seb already know, and maybe some people in the, the chat already know, but um, I'm a bit unorthodox when I come to uh, creating uh, slides for, for conference talks. Um, I don't use any commercial packages. Um, I actually have my own presentation software, uh, which is an Android app that runs on a tablet or a Chromebook. And the layouts you're actually looking at are Android layouts. Uh, the animations you're actually watching, uh, this is actually rendering in real time on a, a Nexus 10 an emulator running on my machine. Um, the frame rates aren't spot on, um, but you're probably not seeing that on the Skype anyway. <laughs> it's probably a little jerky on, on the the, uh, the stream. Um, yeah, I'm I'm comparing them side by side, and the frame rate I'm getting is uh, a lot smoother than that. But on a real device, it's really smooth. Um, and I've been doing this uh, for since I first started conference speaking. Um, I first saw Rito Meyer uh, do this, so I, I claim no originality here. Uh, he did it for the Honeycomb release. Um, and uh, it, it, for those of you that are around in, in Honeycomb, you've got to admit that's a brave man to, to try that uh, a slide deck app running on Honeycomb, which was as flaky as fuck. Um, and he actually did have a device crash in the middle of uh, of his uh, talk. And he had the smarts to actually uh, have it remember state whenever he did a slide transition. Um, and when he managed to reboot the device and fire up his, uh, his uh, slide app again, it restarted on the correct slide, which uh, uh, I thought was uh, showed brilliant foresight, knowing that it could be flaky. Um, but I, I, I chatted to him about it recently, and he, he did actually admit that as it was rebooting, he was petrified that it was going to get into some kind of uh, uh, boot cycle because it was Both maybe loops. some yeah maybe something in the slide <laughs> itself that had caused the uh, the crash. Um, and so until it came up, he he was uh, panicking in, internally, but he he got away with it. Um, so when I was first approached to, to speak at a conference, I thought, yeah, that was pretty cool. I quite fancy doing that. And Rito had said that he was going to open source his stuff. Um, and I looked everywhere for it and couldn't find it. And he hadn't at that point. He, he has since, but he hadn't then. So I thought, well, I'll do it myself. And I was able to uh, build some other uh, cool stuff in there. So I've got a, a companion app that runs on uh, on my phone that I can use as a remote control, but it also has speaker notes. So I can just hold a, a phone in my hand and view speaker notes. Or if they've got an external monitor, I can send the speaker notes to an external monitor. The other thing I can do, which I haven't done for this short presentation, is I can actually live tweet uh, while I'm presenting. Uh, what I do, I can attach uh, a tweet to each slide. And when I transition to that slide, it uses the Twitter API to send a tweet to my nominated account. And so anyone following me on Twitter and watching the talk will see live tweets that link out to relevant documentation or blog posts I've written um, as uh, as I'm talking, which is uh, is quite useful. And 
the really cool thing about doing this, I've, I've had occasional problems where uh, I haven't talked to, my device hasn't spoken nicely with the projector. Uh, Seb fully remembers one of those because he was there and was uh, with me while I was panicking. And he actually helped me to set up by basically running the presentation on his Mac uh, in an emulator. And that could talk to the projector. Um, but Probably yeah, the it, only time I haven't actively broken something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it does allow me to travel really light. I don't need to carry a Mac with me to conferences. Uh, I can. Uh, my current device of choice is a Chromebook, which is really light. Uh, it runs perfectly. That doesn't have any of the same issues talking to projectors as um, when I was driving it from tablets. Um, you know, some tablets would just work at a fixed uh, uh, resolution, a fixed um, uh, aspect ratio, fixed pixel density, and wouldn't budge. Whereas the a Chromebook has a much better HDMI driver and, and it is much more compatible with uh, different HDMI devices. So tends to talk a lot better to projectors. Um, but I think my favorite bit uh, about doing it is towards the end of my talk, I always do the, um, uh, just before we go to questions, uh, I'd like to preemptively answer one question that often gets asked at the end of uh, talks is, are you going to share your slides? And the answer is no. And because fuck there you. There aren't any <laughs> slides. Um, it's actually an app. So then I do the big reveal, explain how the app works. And you see light bulb moments going on in uh, a lot of faces in the audience at that point because they suddenly realize how I was able to live tweet during the, the you know, and it was going at the time that I was talking about certain things. Uh, I can point out that, you know, I've done talks about uh, layouts. I've done talks about animations, vectors. And I can actually say what you've actually been viewing is animated vectors running um, it, as part of the slides. They are rendering real time. And so that's exactly what I've done here. And the app is open source. There's two versions. There's a, a, a light version and my pro version. The main differences between the two is the, the light version is just really a standalone viewer. Uh, the pro version, which is not open source, that just gives me uh, the live tweeting stuff because to, to publish that would mean I'd have to take out my uh, uh, Twitter developer ID, which allows me to use the Twitter API. Um, stuff like that and plus there's some uh, code I'm not particularly proud of in there um, <laughs> so would need a lot of clearing up the with, secret with, sauce <laughs> before I would uh, want to share it publicly all the secret sauce um, but yeah the, the um, but if you want to have a look at these animations and view the slides and just see how the app works it's really really dated now um, because it's still using views, it's not using Compose. So as and when I get back on board the uh, public speaking uh, hobby horse, I will probably completely rewrite it in Compose and uh, make use of all the, the nice Compose animation tools. Um, uh, Fabio, I use Bluetooth to connect between devices. So they basically, you have two separate apps which run on the two different devices. They sync over Bluetooth, and I have just a really, really simple command protocol that says advance a slide, move back a slide. Um, I can uh, do things like uh, I can display the, uh, uh, the current um, display characteristics uh, just as a, a kind of toast kind of thing. So I can just see what the what it's talking to the projector at and things like that, just a, a, a few things. But Bluetooth doesn't need to be particularly quick. You know, even if I've got, uh, you know, 100 milliseconds latency in there, it's still advancing the slides responsively. Um, and I also have um, Bluetooth clicker as well that I can use. Um, 
that's all integrated in. I just do simple key mapping for that. So that basically looks like a Bluetooth keyboard. So I just need to make sure I respond to certain uh, key events. Um, so each time I click different keys on the, the Bluetooth clicker, uh, it just sends me a key code through. I just handle a key event. And just by watching for that, I can uh, do the right thing for the right uh, button. So yeah, that, that's it. Um, I can share a quick link. Uh, let me find um, the GitHub. Um, so if you are particularly interested in this presentation for uh, uh, I will post a link that this is actually all the presentation code that will go into the chat momentarily. Um, do I develop code into the app for every presentation? Usually I give it some tweaks because, um, for example, the first time uh, I uh, I ever presented it was much simpler than it is today because I had much more static slides. Um, I've slowly built into more um, transition animations. I mean, you, you can see uh, if I uh, jump back to the beginning or if I jump back. Um, so here where I do this transition, you can see uh, when I click the image will move to make room for the code uh, no not yet here so that's all done just with um, uh, transition animations they're Android transition animations and so I slowly built up this little framework of stuff like that so you, you're just doing um, uh, you know you just using the transitions APIs um, which are so easy to do so yeah i've kind of evolved it for every presentation sometimes i've needed to add different things in there um so i one of my talks was um uh, about doing stuff uh cool stuff with images image processing that kind of stuff that wasn't supported in the app so i had to develop some stuff but the majority of it is actually putting together the assets and the layouts um, for each of the individual slides. And I have an array uh, that just contains the resource IDs of all the slides in order. So that array gets read in when I select the, which presentation to use. And uh, it then um, just will display those in order. It'll do transitions as it uh, switches between different slides and stuff like this. So, yeah, it's uh, uh, kind of uh, it, it's rewarding. There, there's always that lovely moment at the end where you sometimes just hear gasps when people realize that it's an Android app that they've been looking at, not a, uh, you know, a keynote slide deck or something like that. It's um, maximum overkill. <laughs> <laughs> But it's fun. But it's, it's fun. Great. It's fun. It's fun. It's like, you know, it's what you're, I think it's the best uh, case of like walk the walk and talk the talk. Yeah, it's dog food. It, dog fooding at its finest, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Right. So um, have we got time for another quick example? Yes, I, I we do. I could a path transition yes, in please. Uh, let me just switch my screen again so where are we so hopefully you can now see something different more pizza yeah so let's uh, actually run a different app and that will appear in the preview. So these are some of the uh, animated icons. Some of them are just repeating ones. So you've got this progress at the, the top left. Uh, then you've got this 
eye with a strike through and notice how we actually create this uh, this cutout with the, the strike through that that hides the the eye you've got a plus to an x which uh, is pretty simple but quite nice and effective you so this is um, the next one uh, you got this kind of chasing pattern and this is just using trim paths this is just by slightly uh, doing a start and end trim path and just uh, keeping them in, in and out of sync and so you get this kind of growing expanding line uh, you've got this where you're just uh, changing shapes so this might be a useful one to, to view a path transition. You've also got uh, this. Um, these left and right arrows do exactly the same thing, uh, but I've reused the outer uh, section. Um, so you can actually show shows how you can uh, reuse uh, parts of animators. But again, this is just trim paths at work. And trim paths are great. They really allow you to do a lot for very little work. This one's quite nice. It's a, a little bit like the, the plus X, but it's actually going from a search to a close icon. Um, so there's uh, path data and rotations going on. That might be another one to look at. Next one is the ultimate burger menu. <laughs> Jeez, uh, <laughs> ah, a burger menu. Um, and Love it. so you've got another one that's uh, you know they're just nice little playful animations yeah. um yeah. but can really add slick this to an app where you, you've got something like a play pause button and it's animating between the states there's nothing really complex there but it just gives a nice um bit of character to the app and the final one which is actually the big preview at the bottom is we can do a, a box with the, the the lid lifting up so let's have a, a quick look at this uh search one um let me try and find it so we've got the draw you, you can see quite how many assets are involved in all of these uh so which one is it it's the search x So let's just close that for a second so that we can. Uh... So here we're not using the. Uh... <clears throat> this is actually an animated selector. So this is kind of like a, a state list. Uh, I'm thinking it probably needs to. Build. Let's see if we can build it so we get preview. It would be nice to get a preview. seem to want to that's not good uh, well these are these will do so here's basically the start and end paths so here's the magnifier so we have the magnifier part which if i do um let's just do I do a stroke color of that you can see that is the the whole thing and if I do that that's not actually doing anything um, because this isn't actually visible at this point so we've got essentially we've got the magnifier which is doing the whole lot and then we've got another line uh, if i was to so you're still not seeing this line yet uh, because uh reasons uh, <laughs> and i haven't uh we, we can see this has an alpha of zero so if i change the alpha of that to one so you can mm. see that it's that's kind of like one 
just a, a line and if I make that back to five. So we, we've got two shapes here. One's a line that's invisible initially, and then we've got this magnifier, which consists of an initial move to, an arc, which is drawing a circle. Uh, so that's going to draw that the circular part. Let's just hide that for a second. A move to, which is moving down to the point where the line and the circle meet, and then we're drawing that line segment in. Then we have this invisible line that runs the whole size. If we see the cross, then this is basically if I make this red, that is kind of like that red line in here, only rotated through 90 degrees. Um, if we actually look at the uh, uh, why is it? So I'm using resources there. So we can see that cross line is a move to 52-52 and a line to 12-12. If we look at that in the cross, that is the same thing. It's exactly the same path. But they're rotated through 90 degrees because this has a rotation of zero with the pivot point being the dead center of the canvas and this one we have it rotated through to 70 degrees so they're actually not 90 degrees apart they're 270 degrees apart and what's happening here is in the cross this one is actually much more complex although it's a straight line it still consists of an arc followed by a move to and a line to. The reason being is because we need to animate between these two paths. What I'm doing here is I'm actually drawing an arc that is completely flat. So the control points are the same as the start and end point. And that would just draw a straight line between the two. Now, that is important when it comes to animation because the path, when we animate path data, these commands need to marry up. So we need to have the start position needs to be a move to, followed by a, a relative arc, followed by a move to, followed by a line to, because all the path animator is going to do is compare these like for like arguments and just uh, animate between those two values. So here it's going to animate the, the initial move to uh, between 16 and 12. The two arcs are the key, pit, key bits. And the first one, we've got the control. Uh, we're defining a full circle. In the second one, we're actually drawing. Uh, sorry, I, I'm, there's not control points on an arc. I'm a stupid head. <laughs> uh, what I'm actually doing is going from uh, a circle which has uh, a uniform um, radius for the x and y direction to one that is almost flat. So the y direction is 16 and the x direction is 0 0.1. If I was to put this as zero, it would optimize it and not draw anything because it would say that that doesn't occupy any space. But by giving it uh, a radius of 0 0.1, it detects that it's doing something very slightly in the x direction. And the rest of these parameters are pretty much the same. 
um, for the arc. Um, and when we look at our animated vector, we can see uh, we have four items in the selector. We have a check state and an unchecked state, and we have two transitions. So we have a check transition to the unchecked transition. So basically, this is saying when the state is checked, use drawable search X magnifier. So that's that one. Um, when it is checked, we do the search X cross, which is that drawable. And here we do transitions between the two. Um, so when we're going from check to unchecked, we run this animated drawable. And when we're going from unchecked to checked, we run this animated drawable. And these are animators. Uh, so what we got magnifier to cross and cross to line. This is actually simplicity itself because this is just doing uh, a rotation. And this is doing a this uh, property animation of the path data using the path type between those two strings, the magnifying glass and magnifying glasses line. And just by constructing a line that's actually a flat ellipse and a straight line, it means we can animate or give the illusion of animating the, the magnifier shrinking down to a straight line. And I will see if I can. Uh, is that actually going to? No, it's not going to preview. which is a shame. Um, but if I show the um, running devices again, so we, we uh, come on. <laughs> Demo effect, as always. <laughs> Only the brave. It don't want to connect. It don't want to. Computer says no. Yeah. Not happy. Uh, I go into device manager and you can slap your laptop very hard. Oh no, it's not the laptop. Physical. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't need to be using technology to break it. It can just break just by my mere presence, even remotely. <laughs> it's just the being. By the way, yeah. while while you do that, uh, Compose 1.2 is out. Yay, stable. Yeah. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Time to jump to time to jump to the next alpha. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> I I want to know what's in the next alpha. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that um uh, animation we can see the magnifier shrink to the line and then we we've effectively got two lines there. We make the second one appear, so there's one overlaying the other. And then we just rotate them at different rates. Uh, and we get this kind of like spinny separation effect. So that that's how you implement uh, a path data animation, which is, um, uh, you know, the key thing is you've got to match uh, the arguments, uh, the, the commands in the path data and the types. But it will just... Uh, extrapolate between the values at, for each frame and it's incredibly powerful but it does take a little bit of work you've got to understand your paths to be able to use this and that's kind of the whole point of last week's episode of why it's useful to actually know this stuff uh, because it makes animating them so much easier
Um, and uh, yeah, I think we're probably getting short on time, are we? Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty much time to wrap up. So, well, first of all, uh, once again, Mark, thank you very much because uh, this. Explanations are super, super uh, useful. And uh, as always, this is like the kind of topic where you might have known some things. Maybe you have a vague idea of, all, of how those things work, but it's very rare to find everything that you need in one place. So uh, that's super, super nice. Um, so this was, I think, the third and for now, uh, last episode on animation stuff, but I can promise you we have two more animation episodes this month. Uh, but you're gonna have to wait for well, not this month because this month is over. Uh, next month, <laughs> uh, so you're gonna have to wait a bit because next week I am away, so we're not gonna be streaming next week. Uh, we will though be back the following week on the 13th of uh, July with uh, our good friend and awesome animation person Rebecca from uh, Google. So that's your first <laughs> your your first animation episode in July, but it's not going to be the last. And the week after that, we're also going to have an episode about another very uh, interesting topic, which is insets uh, with Alex Vanya, also from Google. So uh, I'm so looking forward to July. We have, I've told you two out of three streams in July, and you're not going to want to miss the third one either. But I cannot spill all the beans now, because otherwise, where, where will the, the fun be? But there's another thing. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm laughing already. Uh, there's another thing which uh, when we are back on the 13th of July, some of you might know, is going to be uh, during Prime Day. So if by any chance you haven't spent all your money <laughs> over Prime Day, we have a way to help you spend the rest of it. <laughs> which is prepare yourself. It's Primo Day. So Primo Day, um, what's Primo Day? Primo Woo! Day, Primo Day, <laughs> Primo Day uh, that works in Italian and works also in Spanish because Primo means cousin, so it does it does. Wait, that's weird. No, 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 no. That's all about Italian. It's not about Spanish. That's so weird. Okay, Primo, Primo <laughs> mean, means first in uh, in Italian. So let's stick with that. <laughs> Uh, so, um, <laughs> how does it work? So, we want you to uh, have more stickers. So, uh, on 12th and 13th, when Uncle Bezos does Prime Day, we do pri Primo Day. So, you can get... Uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this is hilarious. Anyway, uh, so, the, the <laughs> idea is... Man, there's there's a baby crying. It's like madness. It's, it's like mayhem. The dog is just losing his shit. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Primo oh, no. is the biggest Oh no! Oh no! Spanish and is... español, por favor. En español, en español. So, uh, el, el, el primo primo días, primo días das mi El primero días, primero días. Um, vamos vamos que ofrir. Uh, stickers uh, free for free. So basically, just just let me do this properly. Uh, on 12th and 13th, if you get if you buy one of our T-shirts from the store, you will get the uh, sticker pack uh, for free. So you basically you're gonna get um, all the stickers that we have on the store that you can buy uh, like. As, as, as a product, you will get it for free. So we are giving away uh, the, 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 the the blue one, the new uh, Invalidate and the Start. We're going to do the, the cooler one, the pizza one, everything, the, 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 the hand And the one. spike one, which is the exclusive also the one. Spike one, yes, because the, the spike one is the, the one that you cannot buy as well. So you can get it um, 
you can get it for free if you buy a t-shirt. Any t-shirt will do. Um, and it's just a couple of days. So, um, yeah, we were going to celebrate uh, on the thing live when we wrap up. And then we, uh, yeah, we, we are, this is just because we, we want to have fun and we want you to have more stickers. And, and, more and because we found it hilarious that there's a Primo Day! Primo Day! Primo Day! So, Primo Day, el, el primero, el primero días uh, para todos. Y, 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 se, 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 se tú compras, compras una, una camiseta, uh, tú, tú gets the, the, the stickers for free. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get better at this. But, but yeah, so this is one, one news yes. for the next couple of weeks. And Mark, thank you again. Thank you again. Always a pleasure. <laughs> so uh, now it's time to wrap up here and we will move to do the thumbnail, which get ready for the thumbnail. I think there's going to be things in the thumbnail today. <laughs> um, by the way, again, as a reminder, if you are a Twitch subscriber or if you are a supporter on coffee on the uh, bruschetta tier or higher i seem to remember uh, then you get access to our discord and if you are on our discord then after every stream we will be on a google meet that only you have access to and that uh, you can join us while we do the uh, clickbaity thumbnails for the youtube video for the that we're, will go out the next day and it's generally we also have the guest of the episode and you can chat with us you can chat with them uh, well, you can chat with them, not chat with them, unless they're chat, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I'm tired. It's Last been a time. long day. <laughs> stop, just, just stop with the dead jokes. Primo day! Primo day! Primo day! Primo day! I mean, if, I, if I only... I mean, yeah. we're gonna, we gonna talk about this more. I mean, basta. That's enough. Sebastian, See you on the other side. Together. Get a grip. <laughs> Ciao, ciao. Mark, thank you again. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Have a nice evening, ciao. everybody.